All right, so now we should use the symbol F perpendicular. W what does F perpendicular stand for? It's the component of the force that's perpendicular to the R vector. It's just a shorthand for the component of the force that's perpendicular to the R vector. That's what F sub perpendicular means. And again, in a sense, this is kind of common sense. Based on our common sense, we know that um, the rotation is only affected by um, the component of the force that's, par uh, that's perpendicular to the R vector. Okay. Okay, so when you're pushing, even though you're pu so when you're pushing at that angle, just quickly, when you're pushing at that angle down, the actual force is coming from the perpendicular vector. The torque is coming from the perpendicular component the of the force. I mean, That's right. Yeah, it's not force, it's torque. That's okay. right. All we right. don't want to confuse the force and torque ideas. The force is still 8 newtons, but yeah. we only care, the only part that still. contributes to the torque is F perpendicular. Okay. Well, now we get a chance to exercise our trigonometry skills. How would we actually figure out how long F perpendicular is here? Based on the information I've given you, we should be able to figure out what the magnitude is of F perpendicular. So kind of talk me through how you would do that. Uh, well, you've got 20 degrees, right. so that, w that would be um, opposite over in uh, hypotenuse. Good. Because you've got the force equals 8 newtons on the di on the di on the diagonal arrow That's right. vector. So, um, so try working that out on a piece of paper and uh, keep, uh, keep talking me through each step, please, what you're writing down so we can make sure we're doing that and right. So, the F1, our F perpendicular mm -hmm. is equal to um, opposite over hypotenuse. And so, our F perpendicular um, let's see, our F perpendicular, oh, hold on, I gotta write this off and tell it down real quick. <laughs> so, we're trying to find the vector of F perpendicular, right? right. Okay. So, opposite or platinum is sine. So, the F perpendicular would be, um, why have I forgotten this already? So the F perpendicular would be sine. Oh, it would be sine. Uh, now there's something missing. Sine, yeah, it would be sine 20 degrees, but... Wait a minute. It'd be 8 sine 20 degrees. No. Okay, maybe I can give you some help with that. It looks like you might have gotten a little rusty <laughs> on uh, d uh, breaking things into components. So um, a good way to start here is that we're writing the sine of 20. Um, and right, yes. based on SOHCAHTOA, that should be the opposite side over the over hypotenuse. hypotenuse. Yeah. Now, which side of this triangle is the opposite side? Oh, 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 oh. yeah, okay. So, that, so then we would write F perpendicular. Good. And then it's over um, 8. That's right. We could write just F, but why don't we just put in 8? Because that's the hypotenuse. Okay. So, okay, now now I got it. So now we, multi now we multiply 8 times the sine of 20. Cross multiplying. And that gives Good. us our cross multiply, yeah. So it's 8 sine 20 Good. equals F perpendicular. Good. And that, do you want me to calculate it? Yeah, please it? do. That took a while. I haven't you didn't feel like I've done that in forever and it's just last test. Um okay. Eight sine twenty. So that's two point seven four. Well we just call that two point seven. Okay. Good. Two point seven and the yeah. units on that is The units on that, because it is a force in the That's right. We're still dealing with force. Okay. All right. Now, eventually, when, when people have done a lot of these in a row, they, they kind of skip these first two steps, and they jump straight to this step that I'm pointing to. And that's fine if you're comfortable with that. You could just jump to saying that F perpendicular is 8 times sine 20. But anytime you're getting confused, the best thing is to go back to the first step. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Yeah. And, st and then start plugging in, and then you can work yeah. it out. Okay. So we have that F perpendicular here is 2... Point uh, seven newtons. Okay. All right. So that would give us our uh, F perpendicular side. Good. Um, and uh, let's say here that uh, so uh, that we we worked that out. And let's say that uh, I didn't tell you what the distance was here, but 
let's say that it's seven meters. Seven meters. And the okay, seven meters from the from the pivot to the point where the force is being applied. That's right. Not so Okay, all right. So this point over here doesn't have any significance. We don't care about this distance. Okay. Um, that just is an artifact of the triangle that we drew. Um, what we care about is the distance okay. between the pivot and where the force is actually being applied. Uh, and here's the point where the force is being applied. So that would be our seven meters. Yeah. So now we're ready to work out the whole torque. Okay. What should we plug in for F perpendicular? So work out torque. That would be T... I, 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 just, I have to write the formula real quick. T equals um, F perpendicular R. Right. So it would be, or not T, it would be torque equals um, the 2.7 newtons mm -hmm. times 7 meters. Good. So, then, so let's work that out on the yeah, calculator. So, so that would be um, 7. It would be 19.2, so 19. About 19. Okay, yeah. we'll call that about yeah. 19. So that would be like um, Newton meter. Very good. So I'm glad that you're thinking about the units there. So we've discovered that, I didn't mention this before, but now we've discovered that the units for torque must be Newton meters. The units for torque must be Newton meters, so I should write that up here. Okay. All right, and um, one other thing we have to do is we haven't figured out what the sign is yet on the torque. I haven't discussed doing that, so we're going to have to choose a positive direction. Now, um, this is going to be different from translational movement. In translational movement, we have an X, a horizontal and a, a vertical axis usually, or an X or a Y axis. But um, So we usually pick up or down or left or right to be positive. But in this case, since we're working with okay. rotation, we should choose either clockwise or counterclockwise to be positive. Either clockwise or counterclockwise yeah. to be positive. Um, technically, you can choose whichever one you want. However, there is a convention in physics that usually one of those is chosen as, as the positive direction. Did you remember the instructor talking about that at all today? Yeah, he, we did um, on a, a, a table force problem. Mm -hmm. And um, that was um, that was um, that we did clockwise as positive because just thinking it would be equal, you know, clock goes clockwise, so that'd be positive, and counterclockwise wise would be oh. negative. Mm -hmm. But um, I was kind of, I did was kind of confused about how you. I mean, I know you can pick it kind of like you can pick your x, mm -hmm. y, which one's positive, which one's right. negative in the direction. But um, the way that he he broke that up on a table problem it was a little confusing because half of it was positive and then one part of it was negative. Okay, well hopefully that'll, those ideas will clarify as we continue here. One second. Okay.